Hello, Kyle Orland here with our first look at the HTC Vive. This is the first Steam VR powered virtual reality headset designed for room scale virtual reality that lets you walk around an entire room in the virtual space. And that's why if I back up here, you can see that my office is cleaner than it's ever been. Actually cleared out a lot of space so I won't trip around when I'm moving around in virtual reality. The headset itself has quite a bit of bulk to it. As you can see, there's four thick cables coming out of the top that you can actually feel quite a bit when you have the headset on. There's one for power, one for HDMI, one for USB, and a fourth one that comes to this little headset connector. It's quite convenient. You don't have to plug the headset into your computer and have another wire to trip over. It comes with these little earbuds as well. Very short. That's a little bit of a problem when you put them in your ears. If you're moving around a lot, it tends to tug. If you have an over-the-ear headset solution, that might be a better fit. It's held onto your face with these very thick, sturdy straps. Velcro lets you adjust the sizing fit. Got one up here too, underneath the wires for maximum inconvenience. And once you've got it sized, kind of put it on with two hands. Stick one on the front and pull the elastic around the back. And there you are, you're in virtual reality. On the front here, you can see two lenses in there, and also the cushioning. A little bit of soft vinyl. It's quite comfortable against your face, but uh, it's a quite a bit of pressure as well. It, you don't feel it directly on your nasal passages, but it does make a very tight seal that can be quite sweat-inducing, especially if you're moving about quite a bit. In the back, too, you'll notice it comes to this little triangle, which is inconveniently shaped kind of tugs up on your hair in the back, I find. There's a little bit of elastic give there. On the front, notably, there's a ca external camera right here, so you can see the outside world. This is mainly used in menus and uh, other loading situations to get your bearings around the room, see if you're close to a wall or if there's anything near your feet. If this wire, for instance, gets twisted up, you can look at an outline of the room in chaperone mode and get it untwisted without having to take the headset off. You also see these little bumps on the front and side, which are actually tiny cameras that pick up infrared lasers from these little guys. These are the lighthouse tracking stations. You put one of these in each corner of the room, guaranteeing that one of them should be able to see the headset at all times, no matter where your body is or what might be in the way. Now these don't have to be plugged into the computer, they just have to be plugged into the wall. If they can see each other, they will sync together and they send out the laser signals that you need to track. Valve sends along these little brackets so you can hook them up to the wall or ceiling on a nice little ball here so you can adjust the angle. They prefer that you have them pointing down towards the room at a slight angle for maximum coverage. Or if you don't want to do that and you have a camera tripod, you can just stand it up there like you can see in the background here. Handy. These lighthouse stations are also useful for tracking the handheld controllers. These wireless controllers, two in all, track your hand position as you're moving around the space. You can see the same type of little bumps that you saw on the headset all the way around so that no matter which way you hold it, one of these lighthouse base stations will be in view. Now there aren't many buttons on this controller. There's a menu button up here, which is barely used. There's a clickable touchpad here, which you can move your finger around and get one input on. This is the Steam menu button that brings up the Steam dialog, not really usable in games. Underneath, there's an analog trigger that has a click at the end, nice and satisfying. And on the sides are two grip buttons that you kind of squeeze together with the insides of your palms. Now, that might not seem like many buttons for modern game design, but in virtual reality, you find that the space around you can actually be the most useful button. You might be able to hold down the thumb pad, for instance, and then just aim with your head or with the controller where you want to go. You might also be able to bring up a menu by clicking the trigger and then move to pick items from the menu rather than actually having to use a button for that. So that's a first look at the hardware on the HTC Vive. Uh, overall, it's a nice piece of kit that uh, has a lot of interesting features, and I'll see you in virtual reality.